Welcome and Happy New Year! Today I want to show you a game which I played against the Dutch player Luke van Veli, who is also known by his internet nickname King Luke. And Luke is one of the strongest Dutch players of all time. He's known for very uncompromising chess and they were always very, very entertaining to watch. I played against him two times in the second league, so this is classical chess. And um, I will show you both games in the channel and I start with the first one in chronological order. So I opened this game with a move knight to f3 and Luke played the move f5. So I prepared for many different lines. I took around 15 to 30 minutes for six or seven different openings that he plays and he manages to surprise me on move one by going f5, which I didn't see in the database at all. And now the most principled continuation is probably to just go d4 and suppose back to the Dutch um, against the Dutch player fittingly, but I didn't want to do that. So I um, chose to go for d3. So d3 has now the idea to, to quickly play e4, basically, and that's what we are also going to see in the game. So this is a line which uh, my former coach, Thomas Jakelen, has shown me. And um, yeah, I played uh, now e4, which is the point of the whole line that now you sacrifice a pawn on e4. It's not so easy for black to take it. So suppose he takes, takes, uh, takes, now I play bishop e3, and um, he has no way of, of actually keeping the pawn. So if he goes d5, I can just take. And now I go knight e5, intending either knight f7 or knight e4 in the next move, and I win back the pawn. And he still has this pawn, um, which is isolated on e7, and which gives me some, um, some advantage in the position. So other way of trying to keep pawn would be knight to f6. This runs into knight g5, which now has a very nasty threat of going knight takes h7, followed by bishop to g6 mate. And uh, white gets a very strong attack in these lines, and that's why black usually does not play um, f takes e4. So after e4, he also didn't take on e4, but instead he went for f4 uh, d6, and uh, I played knight c3, g6, and now I just took, and now my, my goal is to play against this pawn on e7, which is not managing to become part of a pawn chain, so ideally black would like to go e5 here to have a nice pawn chain, but um, I now play d4 to avoid exactly that from happening. So now my, my main idea is to play against this pawn on e7 strategically. Bishop d3, now I'm exchanging the white squared bishop. Potentially this might result in a weak square on, um, on e6. And he goes to queen d7 to protect the bishop and also already protecting this square on e6, which, as I said later on, might become weak. I castled, and I think now probably he should have also castled. Um, instead, he went for bishop d3, which might be a slight inaccuracy, because now I have um, queen d3, which I get uh, play, played with a tempo, and uh, after castles, I think I had a chance to uh, get some opening advantage. And the way to do that would have been to go and play bishop g5. Yeah, so bishop g5 makes a lot of sense. Um, if knight c6, I can just go d5. And if he goes something like e6, and then wants to play knight c6 and rook a e8 next, then I can maybe even give the bishop here. So let's say takes, takes, knight e4, and now just continue putting pressure against this pawn on uh, e6. So let's say rook f e1, maybe rook e1 later, or something like queen b3 might be an idea. And I just have the um, a slight edge in terms of space. And as I said, this pawn on e6, this might become a weakness later on. It's not that much, but it's pretty clear that white is slightly better here. So therefore, um, I should have gone bishop g5, but I didn't do that. And instead I went um, knight to e4. I think this is showing that um, I want to draw. Um, it's played too cowardly 
to be honest. Um, and I think against the weaker player, I would have gone for bishop g5. But uh, yeah, I went for knight e4 instead, which exchanges material. But uh, yeah, Luke shows how to how to deal with that. He just went knight c6, finishing development of his minor pieces. And after rook e1, he now just took on e4. And now managed to um, exchange further material, queen f5. And now he will be either in time to play um, e5, or as in the game, this is not as much of a uh, as much of a weakness anymore because I don't have this lead in development. Yeah, so um, in the game, he had many opportunities to go uh, to go e5 actually. So uh, let's take a look at that. I went c3 over protecting on d4, and after takes takes. He now played move rook to f5, activate, activating his rook. He could also go e5 here, I think. So there would be nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, I think this is where you see like how a really, really strong player plays against a lower rated player. So even if e5 uh, would lead to equality, after d takes e, knight takes, knight takes, you would exchange a lot of material and um, yeah, Position is definitely not better for black in, by any means after e5. So instead, he goes for rook f5. Um, now, keeping some imbalances in the position. And after bishop d2, bishop f6, I played rook d1, um, expecting e5. And now I wanted to, to um, take on e5 and just exchange material to reach an end game which is uh, just equal, I, I think, um, and where I would be very confident that uh, I would not be in any danger of losing the game. So instead, and I think this is exactly what you need if you um, want to be that strong, you need to fight on in positions that are equal, um, or even sometimes slightly worse for you if you play against weaker rated opponents, and that's exactly what Luke did. He grabbed some space now, he played b5, <clears throat> accepting the fact that um, yeah, the position will now become complex, but it's now a very, very complex strategical battle. So he doesn't go for e5 and simplifications, but instead he keeps this relatively weak pawn on e7, but takes some space, just this square on c4, and um, after king f1 he now just very calmly grabs more space with a5 and a4. I think this was very, very well played by him. Um, and even though the computer is probably suggesting e5, I think this is much more unpleasant to face than just mass exchanges. Okay, bishop c1. Now I prepare g4, g5. To um, potentially pressure on the e7 pawn again. And he plays another very nice prophylactic move, just rook to d5. Um, going out of harm's way already in terms of g4. Nonetheless, I went uh, g4, and he played a king to f7, overprotecting e7. Yeah, now we reach really a position where it's not so easy for white to make simple moves anymore. So many of my pieces are already on decent squares, but it's not so easy to improve, and that's exactly the positions which are tough to play against these um, almost 2,700 players. So I went for h4, trying to set up potential g5, h5, and he immediately countered that with h5. This also makes a ton of sense. Um, further putting uh, his pawns on uh, the white squares and um, my, or fixing my pawns on the squares, uh, because now, of course, this bishop um, become weaker than the counterpart on f6 in the long run. So I took, and now I thought, well, um, I want to exchange the bishop. It might also be an idea to go knight g5 check, but I decided in favor of um, bishop to g5. Okay, but now the point is he very simply and very elegantly plays the move knight to d8. Uh, I, I avoided to um, to end up with this bad bishop. 
at the price of improving his pawn structure. So I took and he now goes e takes f6 and all what I said before about this slightly uh, weak pawn on e7 is no longer true because now he has the pawn on f6 which on top of not being on e7 anymore now even protects this um, very important square on g5 not allowing my, land, my knight to, to land there anytime soon. Well, um, yeah, now a very interesting strategical battle starts. I also try to regroup my, knight, regroup my knight because the knight has no business on f3 anymore. It's not, not really go to e5 or g5. The squares are also um, covered by my, my pawns, so therefore I need a better square for my knight. And I went knight e1, trying to rearrange the knight to d3. And he just played move rook to e8. Yeah, and um, I really have to say that from an around equal position, he managed to um, create a very interesting fight uh, strategically. And now I, I think I made a next small inaccuracy. Um, and this is to play the king to f1. I think playing king d2 is much more natural here, uh, keeping the king next to queenside pawns. Um, yeah, but I, I went for king f1, slightly more passive and therefore not as good. Yeah, and here he sees the opportunity of playing move c5. And um, yeah, now it's it suddenly gets it suddenly gets a bit tricky. If I take on on c5. Yeah, he can either go just d takes c or maybe already start some um, tricks with knight c5. But I think just d takes c and followed by potential e d8 later is uh, decent for black. So I decided instead of doing that, I would like to exchange a knight, knight f4. And again, if he just takes on f4, the ending is uh, completely equal. So he went for the move rook f5, improving his rook. And after takes, he just took back, um, with the rook. Yeah, and I, I just made some small inaccuracies like this king f1 and um, some, some small inaccuracies uh, earlier, like um, the I think I think yeah, king f1 was really the, the major one and um, and not really going for an advantage in the opening. From there, he really managed to put a lot of pressure on me, and here I uh, collapsed under the pressure. And I played the move rook d1. Uh, so this is probably the losing move already. I should have gone for rook takes e6, king e6, and yeah, probably now just e takes c, e takes c. I didn't like that um, because I was afraid of, of rook f4. And indeed, after like let's say rook d8, rook f4. I might go for his pawns, but it's uh, definitely um, still better for black and probably black is going to be um, a pawn up, or at least it's going to be quite difficult for me to um, prevent that. So for instance, rook b8 runs into b4, I guess. And black is better. Nonetheless, this would have been uh, at least a playable um, ending with some fine chances. So instead, I played rook d1. I did not really see his idea. So after rook d1, he can um, take, take, and now go d5. And I missed this position zook. So it's a very, very elegant move. Again, um, removing my rook from the fourth rank, and in particular from the protection of the square f4. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I have to go back. And he now just can take on d4 with the idea that. Um, takes, runs into rook f4, now grabbing one of my pawns. And maybe some line like rook c2, takes, rook c5, rook d4, rook b5. Could be possible, but I think this ending is already difficult for white after, let's say, king e6, bringing the king. And black is more active and a pawn up, so the fight for a draw would be definitely a long one. 
was instead after C takes D, I decided to go for rook D2, but I think objectively this is also uh, not better, maybe even worse than C takes Ds. So um, yeah, at this point, he just played it quite quite well. D takes C, protecting the pawn on um, D5, preparing rook F4. I went after the pawn on B5, and he took on C3. <clears throat> Yeah, and now played rook b8, trying to go for um, rook a8 or rook h8. But he very calmly just played rook c4, winning another pawn on h4, and now the game is over. So um, played a few more moves. It's now very clear that he's just uh, pawns up for absolutely no uh, compensation or counterplay, so he can... Um, I'll just advance his pawns, and yeah, the way in which he converted it was just bringing the king to c3 and now pushing the d-pawn. And after d3, I had seen enough because either his pawn um, is going to promote, or uh, so if, if I uh, withdraw the rook, let's say here after d2, rook d8, rook d4. Um, so we have to d3, and uh, also the pawn ending is, of course, just completely lost. Because it, also in this case, he just manages to queen. Yeah, and uh, he wins the game. So this was a game where I did not make that many mistakes. I mean, I made one mistake in the end game, in the rook end game, um, and a few inaccuracies before. Um, but yeah, given the simplicity of the position, this was already too much. So he really played it, did it very well. Um, key point being here, not to play e5, to keep the pieces on the board, to grab space with b5, a5, a4, to really show patience. And this is the way um, how you can beat weaker rated players with the black pieces. So very instructive. And um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed after the game, but um, to be honest, now looking back, I have to say that I was just uh, outplayed in the game and he deservedly won the game. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. When you have stress, play chess. When you fall on your rest, play chess for a real deal, for Christian seed.